Battlefielders! How the hell you guys doing? My name is Pwn, coming at you guys right now with some more in-game gameplay, coming at you with a follow-up to ye... I wasn't yesterday's video, it's like the day before, or some Emma Jamma like that, but I want to come at you guys with a cool little video, um, kind of giving you guys what it looked like the community's wish list was. That's what I wanted to do, and it should be exciting. I, uh, I saw a lot of things, and some things I hadn't thought of, things like, uh, incendiary grenades and other things, and I know a lot of people are hit and miss with this, but I want to thank you guys for the support. We had a handful of video responses that I watched. I'd say the majority of them. Uh, a lot of comments down below. And I would like to see you guys replicate that in this video. If there's things that you'd like to see, things you want to stand firmly with, leave a comment below saying, hey, I'd like to see this change altered or added into Battlefield 4. And let me know. This video, this video right here, is actually going to be sent off to EA so they can actually see what's going on. And they want to know what we want to see. So if ever was a time that you guys wanted to voice your opinion and say, I'd like to see you know, blow-up dolls or something. You know, if there's anything you'd like to see, like dolphins. I, I want to see naval warfare, but with dolphins. You know, if there's anything you want to throw in it, don't start saying dinosaurs. In before, everyone says dinosaurs. But... That's the idea. So that's what we have. That's the opportunity with this video is to actually voice your opinion. This is the one time where there's going to be people watching. So make sure you tune into that. But what I wanted to do with this video is not voice my wish list and my opinions, but kind of gather up and just spit it all right at you guys about what the majority of you guys wanted. I'd say the number one asked for thing from, I guess, the majority of the community was Battle Recorder. I don't know what it is. I don't know if people, you know, I guess it's mixed signal. Some people want to be able to record and watch their gameplays, maybe like a match history where it's saved in there and you can go over and possibly use it as a theater mode where you can spectate where the other people in your game were. You could probably you know, check it out, see what's going on, um, see how they played, uh, possibly record it. Or another thing that people were talking about was the possibility to actually spectate. Now, I want to throw a twist on this, and I don't know how easy it is. I don't know if it lags the servers or, or anything like that, but... A lot of people spend some time waiting in the queue, and I think before I hop in a server, it wouldn't be unheard of if I was able to jump in there, possibly hold one of the positions and spectate, and do something like that. Maybe even two additional spectate positions, possibly reserved for those in the priority queue, that they can see what's going on, uh, observe the server, see how it's going, because you know I hate jumping into a server and losing at the last minute. I absolutely hate that. I hate throwing in a server where I get thrown on a team and... It's Rush, and they're on the last set of MCOMs, and the highest guy on our team is 2-18. and 18. You know, I, I'd like to be able to see what's going on in there. And I, I know you can go through Battle Log and look at that stuff, but if there was, like, a spectate mode and I could see the momentum and stuff, it may be different. So that was a cool little idea that a few of you guys talked about. Another really, really heavily anticipated one, and this is a rumored one, one that's been around for a while. I don't know if it's been verified yet or not. But people are looking for weather. Now, I played a game back in the day. I don't know if you guys ever had the luxury of playing it. It was a very, very, I guess, kind of like a simulation kind of game. It was America's Army. I'm not sure if you ever played it. But to even be able to play the game, you had to go through basic training. You had to learn how to maneuver, learn how to throw grenades, learn the difference in the, in the ways to maintain the recoil versus standing, crouching, and being prone. The kind of accuracy that you save. Um, you had to do E&E &E where you'd have to run through and take like a 20-minute course to try not to be seen or spotted. It was about survival, and it was kind of training that I enjoyed. But... One thing that they added into one of their maps, and it's a map called Sandstorm. Now, this map, it was basically you were in the desert. There was sand blowing at all times. And if you were inside, like, one of the small buildings, which there weren't too many buildings, but you were inside a building, you can see about 30 meters out, but everything else was just a cloud of sand. And it was one of my favorite maps. It wasn't played enough, and I'm not sure why, but it was one of my favorite maps. And you had to play smart, you had to move out, you had to communicate, because there's friendly fire, stuff like that, and if you didn't know who was who, then you'd be doomed. You had to pay attention to communicate. And the sandstorm was great. When you moved out of cover, you'd, you'd be able to see about 10 meters in front of you. It wasn't very far at all, but it made you play smart. It made you on your edge. It made you uh, learn reaction time. So a lot of people have been saying, hey, I'd like to see weather implemented. One guy went as far as saying tornadoes and stuff. And, dude, this isn't Jumanji. We're not going to have, like, monsoons and crazy stuff. But rain. Rain would be a cool addition to something. I, I think that would be pretty fun. Um, obviously, it would, it, would, it would alter the sound. You'd, you'd be a little harder to sound whore and do stuff. Um, it'd add pressure. Obviously, if you're outside, it's fine. But if you're inside, maybe blur or, or mess with the vision a little bit more. Maybe you won't see things that you would have prior to. Um, but when you're indoors, obviously, you're clean, you're wet, you're dry, do whatever you got to do. That was a cool idea. I guess another variation of this, and this one I'm definitely for. This is one I didn't think of, and it kind of surprised me. But every map have the opposite map for nighttime. So... Say, say you're playing um, op Operation Metro or something like that. Well, not Metro because half the map's inside the tunnel dark anyways. But you're playing on Sign Crossing. Imagine if that map was dark, like how it was on Tehran. How fun would that be? 
You know what I mean? Just add the option. Doesn't mean it has to be on there or anything like that. Some people said maybe you start off on the first set of MCOMs. It's daytime. It, it moves to dusk and dawn and nighttime for each set of MCOMs. And that was a cool idea. I don't know if people would really favor that, but I would like to have that. Back uh, when I played War to War, there was a very popular map was called Macon, but they had Macon and Macon Day. One was at night, one was at day. And I loved both of them, but you had to play them two entirely different ways. And this encouragement, this this night and day thing, if every map had the, the its opposite at nighttime, I would be so excited for it. I'd love so many of these maps. It'd give something else to it. Um, back in the AA game, there was Pipeline and there was Pipeline SF. Pipeline was in the day, and the Special Forces version was actually at nighttime. And I preferred the nighttime one. It wasn't heavily played, but that was the one that I loved. And, and I know a lot of the community likes to see night maps. So I just wanted to throw that in there. And even more so as it goes towards my idea of all-kit equipment. So... My theory is to completely replace and remove things like the iron V site and bring in goggles with the ability to have thermal and, uh, you know, binox, NVGs, something like that, where you scout an area out and you use it versus just having it all as the scope on your gun. Because I think it generally is more of a problem to have it on there. I don't think anyone, I guess, values the iron V like it should be used. Maybe it's just a lack of nighttime maps or what it is, but the thermal and everything like that. I like the possibility of all kit equipment. Um, obviously we've covered the, that stuff. Another one that a lot of people were talking about was the different types of ammo. People would like to see, you know, this and that, you know, FMJ rounds, ones that would have better chances of penetrating certain walls. Um, I'm, I guess we have similar things like that for the shotgun, but we're talking like all rounds, magnum rounds, stuff like that. You guys have seen this in other video games where different rounds, shoot marshmallows. I mean, come on. There are tons of different things and people like, would like to see that kind of stuff, but you'd have to sacrifice, you know, like one, one, one piece of equipment could be the extended mags. Uh, if you aren't going to use extended mags, then use the FMJ that will give you better penetration or use the magnum rounds, which are slightly stronger than that. But at the same time, you're going to stick to 20 or 30 rounds versus 40 or 60 or something. So I guess it would suit your play style and I guess the guns that it is valuable on. Another one that I was kind of pro for was um, reticle customization. Any sort of, you know, full gun customization at the times are changing Lots of guns have incredible customization, but people were talking like being able to change it from, from you know, like the Cobra from without those couple lines, turn it into like a cross or triple dot or, you know, all kinds of different things. And a lot of games like that nowadays have that, you know, whether it be that you can customize the color, maybe to blue or green or, or pink or something like that. That would always be cool. Um, another popular uh, question a lot of these people want to see return are jungle maps. And I, I am, I don't get me wrong, I love urban maps. I love, you know, things like Wake Island. I love some maps that are wide open in the, and stuff like that. But jungle maps are good. To be able to uh, run through, have trees, nature, and everything like that. Camouflage is a little bit more important. I like that kind of idea. Um, another one, and this one was for me, actually. This is one I forgot to actually talk about. And it was, is something that just, I don't know if I'm OCD or I'm just anal about it, but I like inhabitable buildings. I like buildings you can go in. I can't stand the fact that there are dead buildings. You're playing Strike a Karkin, Sharky, or something like that. You have those tall buildings that nobody can go inside. And they're just there to, I guess, cut off routes or make sure you can't shoot across the map. I understand that. But I feel every building, as long as it's not the outskirts, like the barriers of the map, the, the, the square or of the map, as long as it's not that, I think every building in the game should either have the chance to be destroyed or everybody can at least go up inside of it. There's windows and there're buildings for a reason and a little a couple of glass doors are just that are just there. I just I just don't dig it. That's just something else. Now, this is a more controversial one. This is the last one we're actually going to wrap up with and it's the thoughts of grenades. A lot of people may not like this because people will think it's too much like COD, but I'm not talking necessarily concussion grenades or flashbangs because, you know, especially with 64 man servers, that's going to get cray cray. Half the people are going to be using grenades before they ever use a weapon. But I thought of the idea. I find that something like smoke is a valuable part of the team, but not enough people use it. What if you implement the chance to have it as like an all-kit equipment? So versus the NVGs or the binocs or something like that, or thermal scopes or something, you can actually pull out um, smoke grenades. That way it's available for every class, and you can actually help your team out a little bit. Maybe just make them last like three seconds or something so it's not like as painful as people would think, so they don't just chuck them repetitively. Um, I like the idea of that. And another one a guy mentioned, and I kind of argued it a little bit, was incendiary grenades. It's basically a, a flammable grenade. You throw a grenade, boom, poop, fire. And that's what it is. So part of me was like, that's cool. I'd like to see something like that. Um, you know, possibly even some sort of Simtex, if you will. You know, those kind of, uh, or people like to call them sticky grenades. Um, and those would probably take a, more of an effect on, you know, maybe... EMP grenades that can do a little bit of damage to vehicles or, you know, Simtex can do damage to vehicles. Not heavy damage, like it'd take like four grenades to kill a tank or five grenades or something, but it would do significant damage to it, maybe 10 or 
But that could all obviously be calculated out. But I like the idea of bringing in customizable grenades. I'm tired of just having just frag or two frag. I'd like to choose which I can use. Um, some of them would obviously have flaws like concussion and flash. Even incendiary, if you're playing on like Metro and they're in lockers, you toss a grenade down there, it puts a barrier up. Nobody's going to run through fire, dude. I'm sorry, just not that cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to drop a like reading. And as I said before, drop a comment down below. Let your voice be heard. Peace out, guys. Go get laid. Or, or get it. That works, too.